Hey y'all, today we're going to break down, service, and reassemble an uh, Osprey uh, CE4000 made by Florida Fishing Products. So we're going to start with the, the drag and then we're going to work our way down the rotor and all the rest of the areas. The line ruler on this is bad, so we're going to replace the bearing inside of it. But we're going to start with the this, uh, spool stack here. See how I'm unscrewing that, going backwards to take it off. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to pop this bottom part off. Um, kind of in conjunction with everything just so you can see how everything kind of comes apart but the majority of this stuff comes out from up here on some of these reels the parts would come up from the bottom as well but it's only the clicker portion that comes out on this reel you also have the line keeper there we'll take that out just so you can see what it looks like and how to put it back in but this one is not that difficult to do. Of course, if I say that, then it becomes difficult. So let's watch for that. Yep, there we go. That's nice. I made it more difficult than it should be. All right, let's just push it out. Kind of like so. And that comes straight out just like that. All right, to pop that out, I kind of use the notches inside here to pry it in and up. Pull that out. You'll see there's a drag washer under there and some metal washers. And you have a, a bearing or a couple of bearings inside here to remove two bearings. All right, so I'm going to clean this stuff out. I'm going to use uh, a lot of Q-tips in general to wipe things out as well as paper towel. And there's not a lot of areas where I'm going to use anything else to break these things down, but if I do need to do that, I will use something like Corrosion X to spray on there and break down the grease or dried up grease or whatever is inside there before I start wiping it down. All right, so I added some oil to these bearings already. Uh, I haven't run I haven't run them to kind of work that in yet, but I already added the oil to it. Uh, and while I do that, let me tell you about the drags. Uh, these drags I did not soak in something like. Uh, brake fluid to clean them off or brake cleaner to clean them off and that's just because I'm not sure if they'll disintegrate or what I normally only do that with the pen and like the Shimano even the, some final parts as well but I don't have any replacements so I don't want to risk doing that and then messing it up or something so I'm not doing it uh, I, I think maybe you could use like some uh, smooth drags some carbon text for drags for them or something to replace but you know size it out and then that becomes a different issue anyhow so let's go ahead and start with the top part I'm gonna add some grease inside here and if you wanted to you don't have to use this grease I'm using the pen blue grease but I'm going to use the Cal's universal um, grease for the drags you can certainly put that inside here as well so you don't mix any of them up but that's going to stay in there pretty good with uh with the bearings inside there and i'm going to kind of do the same thing at the bottom just kind of around here where those screws are going to go now let's go ahead and grease these drag washers up so i'll do them all at once and then we show you how to put everything in if you notice here i'm just putting a light amount of grease on there i'm not trying to overpack these things but you do want to make sure the entire area is coated with it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to put in is are the bearings. In goes one, just push it in, and then the other one on top of it. Now we can stick on our first drag washer there. This uh, keyed washer looks like that. Next drag washer. And this piece, you can see it's aired, but the airs are going down or up depending how you're looking at it, but you're going to put them in facing down through this little slot right there. You'll see it when you put yours together. That final one, then we're just going to stick this on top of it, just like that. Yep, that's it. <laughs> now we're going to take this, re this retaining ring. We're going to find there's a little channel here that we're going to stick one end inside of, kind of like this. Hold on to it and just work it around. Get in there. 
once you get it in there you want to make sure it's, it's recessed like it should be which this end is not so I just lifted it up so it can pop inside that channel and now we're good with this for the underside we're going to do the line keeper first I'm going to stick this in with the hole facing up towards me I'm just turning the hole up towards me and that's so I can take this pin right here stick it down through it and then rotate it so looking like that I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of help me then I'm going to rotate it down kind of like that then just push it through from this end be careful you don't scratch that black surface like that now we can take this piece draw it upside down looking just like that and I'm going to stick some uh, some grease on the end of my screwdriver just so I can keep it in place drop this over it rotate it over the holes that you see in there so it'll be right about there and then just screw it in place don't over tighten these screws alright so now we're going to jump to the rotor to start we're going to remove this piece right here so we can undo this um, locking system so we can pull that up is that a spider I don't know what that is I think it's a spider alright so to get that up we're going to move or move this uh, black piece up that's just a washer for the rotor pops up like that and then this just comes up behind it now there's a pin inside here that we can remove just by pushing it out there it is right there and you can pull this up now I'm going to do these two screws for the locking washer pop that up and remove the nut uh, this nut comes off righty loosey I think yes righty loosey to take it off so lefty tighty to put it back on while I have this here I'm going to show you something inside here underneath this cap if you notice there's three little prongs that are sticking over the edge right here that's covering a bearing inside so to get that off you have to use a really small screwdriver to stick under one prong and then just kind of lift it up kind of like that make sure it's raised up just on the edge because if it's not it's not going to work that's one, one side done and then just work your way around last one and that one's up now we're just going to pry it up kind of like that then off it comes there's the bearing inside there. I'm just gonna pull that out and just clean this up and then put it back in. Oh, uh, inside this bearing there's a, a collar. And it doesn't always wanna come out, but the easiest way to get it out is to stick a Q-tip inside there and just push. I said easiest, I didn't mean it always happened. Come on. And of course, if it doesn't come out, you can leave it in there. You don't have to take it out. But, you know me, I'm going to take it out. There we go. So now I'm going to do is oil this stuff, clean this off a little bit, and then just put it back in. Just going to rest it over this and push down. So it's inside. I'm going to add grease all over this thing. Inside here there's some threads that screws onto that uh, pinion gear. I'm going to grease those as well. Now we can just drop this back inside. That collar is facing down so the uh, 
the ridged end, if you can see that, that end that's sticking out right there will be facing down. This cap just goes back over it, kind of like this. I got one side set, like right there. Then I'm just going to push kind of at an angle to get over these other two sides. And you can hear it click in place when it's when it's set properly. Now we're just going to pull this up. Let me pop this off right now while we're here. Just on screws backwards. Now we're going to open all these things up. I'm going to undo all these screws here and pull this entire thing off. Uh, and in the process we're going to replace the, uh, the line roller bearing here. And this one has a, the way it's set, it's, it has the, um, the spring on one side and the trip arm on one, on the other side. And I kind of like that because I think that having them both on one side is, it adds pressure to just predominantly one side of the, uh, of the rotor, which I don't think is necessarily a good thing. So what you saw me take off there was from the bottom that goes on top of the pinion when I put that, uh, put them back together. All right, so on this side, I think this is the the spring. It's lifting it up gently, and then I'm gonna kind of push that down to get it out of there, like so. This one just comes up like that. Now we can undo these two screws here, one on this side, and I'm gonna leave that together with one side, just in case the screws are different, which I think they are. It looks like they're not. Pull this off. Or not. Pull that out, which is a trip arm. And now we can pull this off and get the spring out. There's a weight on this side. Uh, so it should be glued in. So hopefully it is. If it's not, we're going to have to yeah, it looks like it is. Even if it were not glued in, you still have a, um, a little bumper here that kind of holds it in place when you put it back on. Uh, I think that's it for that, so I'm going to leave that alone. To get this line roller, we're going to undo this screw here. I'll keep this intact so you can guys can kind of see it, or try to at least. Put that over there. There's a washer under here. There's not a lot of pieces on this. Let's see if this works. There's a washer. This is the line roller. There's a bearing inside here. And a good way of remembering where this line roller or the bearing or the line roller situated is the bearing goes from this side from the bail arm side inside the line roller so it has to look only one way which would be like this facing kind of like that all right i think that's it and let's go ahead and get this cleaned up uh same kind of deal as for the uh drag area i'm going to use the same kind of tools uh, obviously i'm using a toothbrush as well and we'll get that replaced uh one thing guys if you don't know the the measurements of your of your bearing you can use a caliper to measure it, which is what I did here. Uh, this has to be a 4x7x2.5. Uh, I had this set in the millimeter section, or side. Just opened up. It's approximately 3.75, but that's closer to 4, so we just round it up to 4 by 7. And then this should be 2.5, which is around there. So again, this is a 4 by 7 by 2.5. We're going to replace it with this one. That's a pen bearing. I'm sorry, that's a, a Shimano bearing, actually. All right, so I'm going to oil this. And there's a lot of little areas that I'm going to be greasing up here. Uh, so I'm going to just ask you to just follow along with me versus me narrating as I go. And some of this is more for protection than anything else against the elements.
Now I'm going to talk about this part. Uh, this is the line roller. Definitely going to grease inside here so that bearing doesn't get frozen inside. So I'm just greasing the entire surface area inside there. And I'm going to grease around here. That's where that washer sits. Some inside that hole where the screw is going to go. And if you notice, there's two little prongs at the end right there, if you can see that. If you can't see it on this one, on yours you'll see it. And I'm also going to grease the bearing. You do want to add some protection to this right here. Uh, this is kind of exposed. It's hard to fully protect this, but do what you can with it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take this line roller washer, drop that on, make sure it goes all the way down. I'm going to take my bearing, stick it inside the opening it should go through, and then stick it over that post. And that's it. Now we're going to take this, stick this on, and then we're going to rotate it until we find the stoppage. So I'll do it where it's not set. And we'll rotate it until we feel the line roller, or sorry, this bail arm drop down and then lock in place. It can't go anymore. Kind of hold that there. Even if it slips out, it's no big deal because you can always uh, reset it. I'm going to add a little bit of grease to this line roller screw. Then I'm going to screw it in pretty close, but a good thing about this, um, this bail arm is that it It, uh, it has a pretty deep recess to accept that uh, those prongs, which is good. So I go to snug, then I back it up just so it's a little loose, but you'll see it's still set in place. Now we take the bail spring side gonna drop that in. Notice I didn't put any grease on it. I just put grease in the bottom part. Then I'm gonna cover it up. Screw it in place. All the way down is good. Now we have that set, right? That's ready to go. Let me add a little bit of grease to this hole right here. I thought I did, but take this end of the uh, bail spring or the pivot on it, put it inside that hole, then we're going to take it and just push it down and kind of rotate it slightly until we feel the lock in place. Now we're going to pinch the sides to hold it down in place so it doesn't shoot up on us and then screw it in. And you can snug that down. I'm just going to drop this uh, trip arm over. Push that up all the way to the top. Push this down on top of it. Cover this up. And then we'll set the screw on for up there as well. And the last thing we're going to do after this is to tighten that uh, that line around the screw down. And let's double, che double check that to make sure it's working well. Uh, if you watch any of my other videos, you know I like to use a line to just uh, test it out versus using a Q-tip. But sometimes I do use a Q-tip as well. 
So I'm going to hold it between my legs and just kind of rotate it like this to make sure it's working right. And we're good. Make sure it flips working good. All right, now let's get to the body of the reel. We're going to unscrew a few things here. Uh, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit and I apologize for that. I'm going to unscrew this here for the rub guard on the bottom. It's only one screw. Take my knife and just kind of pull that down. That came out pretty easy actually. Now you're going to have four screws on the hair, but you also need to remove this cap because there's another screw up here as well. So let's go ahead and remove the top part or this cover. I'm holding it down while I pull these screws out. They're all the same size. That's because there's a spring under there. Not that it's going to go flying anywhere, but just in case. <laughs> so scary. Get out. There's this metal piece under there. Okay, so here's a screw that's missing or that we couldn't see earlier. I'm going to keep my hand over this section where that spring is. Again, not like it's going to really shoot anywhere, but uh, just in case it does, we don't want it to get lost. And take note of these screws because the sizes are different. I'm going to lay them out so you can see them afterwards. Here's the bottom left. Well, you can see where it's coming from. And then for this one on top, when I lay them out, I put this just straight in the middle. Get out. Kind of like that. So I know where they go. All right, so now we can lift this up. I'll just keep my finger over here. Up that comes. And now I'm going to work this down towards the bottom. It doesn't go all the way down where you can access that screw, but it gives you room to be able to pull this uh, drive gear out. And that's what I was trying to do. Because now I'm going to undo this screw for the uh, for the shaft. Pull the shaft out so I don't need to worry about it anymore. And now I can just kind of flip this out. Kind of like that. To remove that crosswind gear. At this point, you can do whatever you want. You can do the bottom part first or do the top part so you don't have to worry about the spring anymore. I'm just here, so I'm doing this, doing it this way. You have to remove a screw to get this crosswind gear out. And under here, you're going to find a couple pieces. Let's get that out of the way. Where is it? Oh. You have that bearing there. And be careful when you're doing this because there should be a washer under there as well. There's the washer right there. Some of these things I, I like, some of these things I do not like, but I will not give you my opinion unless it's a positive. How about that? All right, so that's all out. To access that bearing, you have to remove this side. So I'm going to start with the, the uh, pinion stack now. I'm going to pull this up, keep my finger over here now, definitely, because I don't want the spring kind of shooting around on me. The spring is out. I'll get to that in a sec. Pull this stack off. That's the AR clutch. Then you have a spacer. Remove that. To get this bearing out, we're going to undo these two screws here. And what you see me doing on this side, I will end up doing for the other side as well. I just want to show you on camera. Keep those separate. That washer came from right here, inside there like that. Now we can pop this out with any luck. 
cool. I like to keep those things separate. And that's it for this. All right, so I'm gonna remove this one as well, get that bearing out of there. This bearing actually comes out through this way, so you can see that it doesn't come out through the outside, it comes out through the inside. There was a washer on there, I think. No, maybe not. Okay, so I'll do this one as well, but I'll see you guys after I clean this stuff up. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is something I did not show you before I cut the video. That's the bushing for the uh, pinion gear and that was stuck to there. All we're gonna do is take it, make sure it's all pronged and if you can see it right there, it's gonna go through this little slot in the housing. So drop it in. I'm just gonna work it in to the right spot. Just like that. Now I'm gonna do this side where the the bearing goes. I'm take a little bit of grease, kind of line that hole somewhere around there too, just because that's metal. Don't know why. Pop that in place. Add some oil to it. Now let's take this and drop this inside here so we don't forget it. Take this, cover it up, rotate it to the holes, and then you can screw it in. We'll do the same thing for the other side, but remember that uh, bearing goes in over here. I'm not gonna put the bearing in, I'm gonna put the bearing on top of the gear and then cover it up. Unless you wanna do a light amount of grease as well. Not too much. And if you notice, this side does not have that plastic uh, washer, as you can see. All right, now a couple places we can grease inside here would be around here. Then we'll hit those gears in a sec. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's pretty quick. <laughs> All right, so for the block, decent amount of grease inside the channel. Then all around the surface area. A light rub from your fingers or residual greases on your fingers on that post. For the uh, shaft, we're gonna add some grease at the bottom part where the where it's gonna go inside the block. I'm gonna grease this spacer that goes on top of the pinion. I'll put a light amount of grease on top of the pinion gear and on the oscillation of main gear. Some there in the bottom as well. I definitely want to just grease the entire surface area of the, of the, uh, the metal, especially those um, threads on top that are going to receive that rotor nut. I'm also going to add some grease inside that hole where the, the handle is going to go. These are I'm gonna grease around that post. I 
and everything else for the pinion stack as we kind of work our way into it we'll go ahead and get that stuff done as well sorry I missed this piece right here now we're just going to oil the bearings that are remaining then we're going to get this to start taking shape by putting it back together. I'm going to put these things in when I put the oil on, if possible. And even though it's a bearing, you can still, be, you can still oil that. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is put the, uh, the crosswind gear on. And I'm looking for these two pieces here. I'm going to drop them down over it. Make sure to go down over that shaft. Drop the bearing on. Push it down. And make sure this lines up and pushes down as well. The screw will help it go down if it is not fully set anyhow. I will tell you one thing when we're putting this uh, screw in. Well, I'll tell you when we get to the bottom of it. It is possible for you to over tighten this. Uh, so if that happens, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's possible for you to over tighten this where it doesn't spin great, right? So you just, since it's plastic, you can slightly back that up. And then it spins a lot better. Not too much. The goal is to loosen it as much as it takes to get that to spin freely like that is right there. Now we're going to do the pinion stack. Uh, so first I'm going to take this, stick the spacer on just like that. Then I'm going to take the the sleeve for the anti-reverse clutch, put it on just like that. And I'm going to stick this in before putting the clutch on. And the reason being is because it's a little bit easier to do it this way than the other way. <laughs> that makes sense. Let me stick this there so I can show you guys something. <laughs> uh, let's say you have it like this. Um, it's not going to fit like this. It's not supposed to look like this. You kind of want this uh, this pointed end in the middle somewhere. So simply rotate it till it gets around there somewhere. That should be fine. And the reason you want it that way is because you need to get, get this in that channel and you need to use two specific slots on here so if it doesn't fit the first time just rotate it again which this is kind of slipped on me so I'm gonna rotate it some more and I'll show you the channel afterwards just like that that's almost perfect okay I was just testing something out excuse me so if you look here, there's a channel right there and one right there. Those are the channels you're using to put this AR clutch in. So now at this point, I'm going to stick the, uh, the spring in. And don't mistake me when I say this is easy because it's not necessarily easy. But it is a whole lot easier than it used to be for these reels. I know that because I've worked on one. A while back and I wasn't happy we're putting the end of this spring over the the tab on this post or the post on this uh, this arm and when you get it there we're gonna push in and down uh, from the end here I almost got it we're close Close enough to think that I'm going to be good, which is good. I'll show you what it looks like, but not necessarily how to put it in. Uh, that's perfect. Okay, so if you can see that, the prong then, the right angle prong then is facing up and to the right. I'm using that as leverage to push down. So basically, what I did was essentially uh, get that started over the post on this tab. 
push with my tweezers for the top part but also towards the bottom so that I could slip inside this groove right here and then just push it down so it stayed flush. I hope that makes sense. I think it does. Uh, if it doesn't, that's kind of how it looks if you can see it. It doesn't really go shooting anywhere as you can see, but I don't want to play with it and have it all of a sudden mess around and shoot out on me. So I'm going to put this in. Then this. I think I'm going to run them. And now everything's just kind of set in place. Now it's slightly tricky at this point, but not necessarily. Uh, what you could do here is a uh, temporary little hold. Let's take this plate, put it over it, uh, which is kind of what I'll probably do, just so nothing slips out of place. But this is not the final step. Just want you to know that. And I kind of like doing this. I prefer doing it this way than leaving it open because I want to take my hand off of there and use it for other things that I'm working on down by the main gear area. Make sure you don't re-thread these holes. You want to make sure it's going in smoothly. If it's not, just keep backing it out and working it back in until it starts to go down pretty smooth. Because if you don't do that, you're ending up uh, re-threading the hole and that's not going to be good for the longevity of the reel. And I'm only going to put a couple on. But I'm going to snug them down just so we have them kind of just set in place. We have one that's left over here. Alright, so now I'm going to take my block, stick my post through it, line that up just kind of like this, move the block down over that post that's on the uh, crosswind gear. And now I'm going to stick the shaft through. The shaft is only going to go in one way. So if it doesn't go in the first way that you're trying it, flip it over and then try it on that side. Let's let that down pretty good. And now that's all set. Now we're gonna take the gear or the drive drive gear, drop that in, stick our our shims back on there, and I'm gonna take the bearing and put it on top. I know I oiled this already, but I'm gonna oil it again. And that's kind of how it looks. Now all we're going to do is take this and cover it up and screw it in place. We'll double check one more time to make sure we're not forgetting something and I think we're good. Get on there. I'm going to feel it to make sure it feels fine. And if it doesn't feel fine, feel free to open this back up. Uh, don't play with the shims yet, but instead of putting the bearing on top of the main gear, manually stick it here and just push it down real hard inside so it kind of recesses a little bit more. Because one thing that could happen is you put this on after you set the, the bearing on on top of the uh, main gear. And this is riding a little bit high, so it ends up putting more force on the on the drive gear than it should. And that looks good. So now I'm just going to squeeze this together and rotate this and see how it feels. And that does feel good. So we should be in business there. With any luck, we'll see at the end. If not, then we'll just open it back up and fix some stuff. All right, so now we can screw all those things in. And 
the beauty about this thing is that uh, since it's plastic, it's a plastic housing. Well, I shouldn't call it plastic, but a polymer or sort of some sort of plastic housing. Uh, if if you're having any kind of resistance uh, when you put this back together, and it's only slight, you can actually play with these screws in terms of the depth to adjust any kind of uh, to to relieve any kind of pressure that might be exerted on top of the main gear which is causing it to kind of get stiff or bind up on you. You can't back it up too much, but you can certainly work it just like I did for the post on the uh, on the crosswind gear. Let's feel it, see if it's still good. Still feels good to me, which is always good. I'm gonna leave the boot off for now. I'm gonna work up back on, I'm gonna go back to the top and work on that. So now I'm gonna remove this. So we can cover it up. Lift that up like that. Be careful not to pull up on any of this stuff because then you'll pull that spring out of place. I want to make sure that's in place the way I like it. Don't want to use that. That looks good. Alright, so now we're going to take this plate, put it back on. Just kind of rest it there like that. On this cover, you'll notice there's a notch right there. There's also an arrow pointing to that notch. That notch is for right down there. There's a little bump that you need to get over. So that's what we're going to do. Kind of just put it in that direction. Be careful when you put this on because you don't want to rotate that metal piece inside. But you do want to get that kind of over there like that. Now just screw it in place. You're not going too snug, you just get them kind of down to the bottom and then that's it. You're not trying to over tighten these. Now before I forget, I'm going to put this washer on there. That goes on just like that. And now we're in business with this. Now we can go ahead and add some grease to right here to protect that. So that when water seeps inside there, it doesn't kill that screw. Don't need any hair really, but I'm putting it on. Then we're going to cover this up and screw it in. Now we can take the rotor, stick that on, just kind of rotate it until it falls in place. And now we can certainly use this to screw this down and lock it in. Remember it's lefty tidy, righty loosey. And the way we're kind of lining this thing up is you want to get it snug and then you want the flat side facing around there, that area, uh, kind of be in the middle, the, that one of those holes be in the middle of the flat side of the nut. And you can always stick the uh, this lock washer on and test it out. Uh, make sure when you put the lock washer on the beveled end is facing down. I think you can see that when you do your own reel. And that's lined up perfectly, so we're good with that. I'm just get a quick feel for it. All right, so I don't know if some of you saw the rust or uh, where that was on this. I just used my wire brush to kind of brush that off. Uh, the second step would be to kind of clean out the inside. So I'm going to stick a Q-tip through it, just in case, clean out whatever's inside there. I'm going to add some grease inside there. And the reason I do that is because I don't want it getting stuck to the shaft. That would not be good. I'm also see as you can see um, adding some grease around the end right there as well and I'm going to add some grease just around the shaft I like to make sure that we're doing okay 
You can add some grease around here as well. That's for when you put the drag knob on. I guess I might as well do it now. All right, so I'm just gonna take this, drop it on. I'm gonna line that hole up with the hole that's on the shaft. So I'm gonna take it there, leave it like that, put this piece in or get it started. Kind of rotate it to where I'm matching up with the line. I'm sorry, with the hole on the shaft as I gently push down on it. You want to get past the threads for the uh, for the drag knob. Then I get to the right spot, it just slips right in. It's a little bit easier than trying to find it afterwards and then putting the, the pin through. Now for this, it's pretty straightforward to uh, to remove and to reset. Just pop this spring out to reset. You put it back in and pop it back through these little notches. Now the way this is going to sit is just like this. Sorry, this way. Looking just like that. We're gonna take our washer, pop that on over there. Make sure it gets all the way down, and it looks just like that, and you're good. All right. So the last thing we're gonna work on will be the handle. I'm gonna take my trusty old divot tool, so I can undo this. I'm gonna open this up. Did that rotate on me? I think it did. Uh, no fear. All right, so that's rotating as I pull, as I turn this, so it's not really removing the knob or the the screw. So I'm going to wrap this the shaft here with some paper towel, so I can squeeze down on it. That should be good. I'm just going to hold it there. A good amount of pressure, but nothing, nothing crazy. As long as it's enough to turn this, you're good, which is happening right now. So we're good. Take that off. Now we're just going to go ahead and get the screw that's inside there. Undo that. Pull this up and look for the good stuff underneath, which it does not look good. Eesh, Allah. Pull this up and see what's going on. Is it a bearing or a bushing? Be a bushing, please. It looks like a, I can't tell. One second. If it's a bearing, it's expensive. That's why I'm saying that. Yeah, it's a bearing. There's a washer on top of it. Get off. There's a washer that was sitting on top of it. That's why I couldn't tell. It is a bearing. Yep. It's a bearing and it's bad. I'm sure this other one is bad as well. Uh, let's see if we can get it out with... With... Uh, I want to get it out with. Let's try this. Can it go all the way through? Nope. I thought it might be frozen in there, but it wasn't. <laughs> I guess I should have tried it first. And that one's bad as well. Not good. So we're going to replace those bearings. So I'm going to get the right size to put these in. Uh, clean this up first, and I'll come back to you and show you how to put it all back together and what to do with these things. All right, so I got the bearings. I'm going to go ahead and get them oiled. I cleaned that off pretty well. Uh, you want to make sure you clean off all that rust that you saw there before because you don't want to uh, kind of recontaminate the other stuff. So I'm going to let that sit for a second and I'll rub that in or run it in. Grease right around here, this entire shaft. Add a little bit to that hole right there where the screw is going to go. Now we're going to take these and then just kind of work that oil in. And 
one thing I'm going to do with these is I'm going to add some grease to them to try to help protect them against the elements. So for the first one, that's what we're going to do. Grease all around it. Grease inside this hole right here. And when I cleaned this out, I used a, a few Q-tips, but I wanted to make sure I got inside here, but also through the shaft as well, so it couldn't come dripping out or something and re, re uh, damaging whatever's inside there. I want to grease the inside where that second bearing and the top bearing is going to go, and also the threads where that cap will be going through. First thing I'm going to put on is the bearing. Not this one, this one, down like that, stick on the washer and for those of you out there, I prefer having like a, just like a plastic bushing on the bottom versus having a bearing because that's typical of what happens. Stick that down just like that. Now for this one, we're going to do the same thing. Kind of drop that in, like so. Take my tweezers and just kind of work it in over it. Be a little careful because you don't want to push it in too hard and damage the bearing. Rest that down just like that. Add some grease to the threads here. And then screw it in. Now we can go and screw this back in. Let's go ahead and add some grease to the threads here as well. Just because. Now I'm going to kind of get it started like that. I'm going to use this, stick it in there, and I'm going to rotate this or two things at the same time to kind of just work it in. starts to spin I'll do the same thing I did before I can't tell it's spinning yet it is spinning so let's go ahead and wrap it up again and then we'll just tighten it down I think we're good there yep we're good all right, so last part will be just the grease inside here. And the threads. We're just going to go into the main gear. Well, let's say one of the last parts, not the last part. Now I'm going to test this out a little bit and then I'll show you how to put that spool on because it's actually not as simple as it looks or it may not be. Sometimes it can be but other times not. Feels good. Nice. Flip. Let's see if it works. Works nice. Good stuff. Alright guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, that subscribe button, all that good stuff. Uh, if you're interested in videos like this, and be definitely sure, be definitely sure to spread the, the word about the channel. Uh, to put this on, we're going to make sure it's lined up. And if it's not, we're going to start from the other end. It is, so we're good with that. Yeah, that's good. If it was not lined up properly, we could turn it over. And just kind of thread it through this way to kind of line things up and then put it back through this way but that's lined up properly i'm pushing down the sides to make sure that, that gold piece that you see on top is going below the shaft or the uh, 
the keyed portion on top of the shaft. To get this drag knob on, we're going to kind of angle this like this and then work on screwing it in. Most of the times it works, sometimes it doesn't, then it's just a pain in the butt. It looks like we're good though. Drag feels nice. Yep, feels too nice. Alright guys, thanks for, again for watching and uh, I will see you all next time.